Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Gross, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research, founder of Keto Swiss. This video is going to be all about the world's oldest fuel, ketone bodies. Where are they made? When are they made? What are the signals so that they are being produced? Are ketone bodies protective of potentially some diseases like migraine? And then also other ways to get into this state of ketosis, which is exogenous ketone bodies rather than endogenous liver-made ketone bodies, such as ketone body salts and ketone body esters. What is the world's oldest fuel source? Ketone bodies. Whether we are awake or asleep, our cells, our organs, our body, our brain needs energy consistently all the time. And that energy mostly comes from the food we eat and then it, this is turned into ATP. So ATP is the energy currency of the body. ATP can come primarily from glucose and humans do have glucose stores in the form of glycogen, but that is very limited. So glycogen stores are typically depleted within 24 hours. Now from an evolutionary perspective, humans would no longer be around if we would rely exclusively on glycogen or glucose as an energy storage because we would not have a constant food supply as we did today. So even the leanest of humans has another form to make or another source for ATP generation and that is fat tissue. Even the leanest of humans has a six week supply of energy to make ATP in stored in the fat tissue. So fat is a source for energy. But wait a minute, we already learned in a different video that the brain can actually not really use fatty acids because of the brain barrier that surrounds it. Long chain fatty acids cannot actually get into the brain. So how is the brain being fueled in a time of starvation or in a time where carbohydrates and glucose aren't readily available? This is where ketone bodies enter the pictures. Ketone bodies are small chain fatty acids that can be synthesized from longer chain fatty acids. And this process is called ketoneogenesis. And this happens primarily in the liver, but also the kidneys or the brain to some extent can make the small fatty acids, ketone bodies. Now, whether, when ketone bodies are elevated, this is called a state of ketosis. You may have heard that word before. Now, typically on a Western diet, levels of ketosis are typically very low, about 0.2 millimole, so almost non-existent. But after about three days of fasting, those levels can go up to three millimole or more, and ketone bodies can actually replace 60 to 70% of the brain's energy demand, of the brain's glucose demand, in times of fasting when glucose is scarce. Babies are born in ketosis, meaning that babies, we are all born making ketone bodies. Ketone bodies are essential for brain development, for intelligence and for the function. If somebody's not making any ketone bodies at all, the baby will not survive. The mother's milk contains a precursor, MCT, a precursor to ketone bodies so that the brain development can be as good as possible while the child is not yet eating. But as soon as we go onto a normal Western diet, ketone body synthesis is stopped over time. How do you get into ketosis? Well, amongst the signals you may have already guessed to get into ketosis are either low insulin, low glucose, low blood sugar levels, basically that is low glucose, and increased amounts of fatty acid in the blood. That will turn on and be the signals for your liver to now turn on ketogenesis, making ketone bodies. Now we know that ketone bodies are an alternative fuel source for the brain. So in that it's able to circumnavigate some of the potential problems that people may have with glucose metabolism or glucose transport. It's a metabolite, so it's an alternative energy source, a bit like you can have a hybrid car that can run on petrol as well as on electricity. Electricity being glucose and the petrol being the ketone bodies. But it can be much more than just being a fuel source. For one, it is more efficient fuel source, meaning that it produces less waste when it's burnt, waste being reactive oxygen species that can damage your mitochondria and your DNA. It will also require less oxygen when it's burnt while producing more ATP, so really being a bit more efficient. But ketone bodies are also a signaling molecule. A signaling molecule 
is something a bit like a hormone that does much more than just being a fuel source. It can lower inflammation, it can inhibit oxidative stress, it can also reduce hyperexcitability of the brain, which is a problem with migraine, but also epilepsy. It um, can be beneficial for the gut microbiome and it can potentially even improve mitochondrial functioning. It is an HDEG inhibitor, so it also works on gene expression. So it does a lot of other things. And there's actually several case studies that have been shown that ketosis can be protective or preventative for migraine. And they showed reductions in the height of 75% reductions in migraine frequency in those trials, one of them being on 96 patients, some others being on around 20 patients. But there's really more and more evidence accumulating that ketosis, the state of elevated ketone bodies in your blood, can be beneficial for migraine. So far we've discussed ketone bodies that your body itself makes. That's called endogenous ketosis. Primarily your liver is making ketone bodies in a state of starvation when you're fasting. You will end up in a state of ketosis. Now there's also a different way to get into ketosis and that is that of exogenous ketosis. Exogenous means exo from outside. You basically take pre-made ketone bodies and ingest them in a the form of a supplement or potentially a medical food. Now there's different ways, different products, different forms of these exogenous ketone bodies. The first category is that of ketone body salts. This is basically a white powdery substance, but the body is actually handed, meaning that the body itself only makes the DBHB. So the human identical molecule would be the DBHB. And this is what I would recommend taking because you only want to take something. I only want to put something in my body that my body would make naturally. Now there's another class, that is called ketone esters. Ketone esters basically means that you have a BHB and you're binding it to a backbone molecule that makes it stable. And this carrier molecule is often a molecule that can also be ketogenic, but it's often an alcohol. Now the problem is you get longer elevation, you get potentially higher elevation. And in addition, those oily liquids taste a bit like a combination of jet fuel and foul eggs. It's the worst substance you've ever tried. And I try a lot of things and I don't mind if it's helping me, but these things you're still nauseous for hours after. Now, last but not least, uh, there's also MCTOs, middle chain triglycerides. They have a special characteristic. When they're broken up, they immediately pass into the liver and accumulate. And, and that basically leads to ketogenesis even if you are ingesting carbohydrates. And that's something that all these different categories have in common. You will be put into ketosis irrespective of what you eat. Now, I'm not suggesting you should go on a high sugar crappy diet and just take ketone bodies on top of it, but it's definitely a therapeutic tool that you can use in your migraine or in your health journey if you want to keep your brain a bit more active and alert and feed it with a very effective anti-inflammatory, antioxidative energy source. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Gross, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research, founder of Kilo Swiss.